It's the new Red Green Show! <laughs> and now, here's the reason God created No Fault Insurance, the all-fault guy, your hero, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you very much. Well, she's a very, very big day for a special young man up here, Possum Lodge. Harold, you got a little announcement for us? No. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> He's a little bit shy there, you know. <laughs> yeah, Harold today has gotten his driving license, which means he's well on his way to becoming a man because, of course, now he has a reason to get a vehicle. And once he gets that vehicle, he will, in fact, be a man. Unless it's, you know, like an 87 Sunbird. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, okay. You know, yes, I took the driving test. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I had, a, you know, some, some mishaps and miscues and property damage there. Oh. You flunked again, Harold? Yeah. <laughs> What, what happened? Well, I had the same driving examiner as last time. Sure, yeah. There's only one driving examiner in the Possum Lake area. I should have expected that. Yeah. But she, and she gave me the benefit of the doubt, and that was good until I ran over her foot. <laughs> I didn't signal. You know. Yeah, I do know. Same foot as last time. She was tech. <laughs> well, Harold, listen, you got to get right back up on that horse. You got to go down there tomorrow and take the test all over again. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I can't do that. Why not? Well. Well, number one, there's various reasons, but number one is that the test car doesn't come back from the auto body shop till next week, so that, that'll slow me up some. And, and, and she says I have to take driving lessons before I can retest. Oh, Harold, man. Nobody in their right mind will give you driving lessons. You will? Oh, thank you. <laughs> What you're looking at now is a bunch of segments from this particular show. The main message being, for gosh sakes, don't even think about changing the channel. I'll tell you something, if you want to make sense out of this program, you got to give it your undivided attention. If any of you out there are driving instructors, I'll tell you right now, you are all underpaid. Yeah, the website says right here in the driving manual. Driver will come to a complete stop four meters prior to the intersection, creep forward, come to another complete stop prior to entering said intersection. Harold, there are two kinds of people. Those who do things and those who write manuals. <laughs> a rolling stop is fine. <laughs> rolling stop doesn't mean rolling over. <laughs> around that corner on two wheels. Well, the possum van only has two good wheels, Harold. <laughs> Besides, there was nobody coming. So you do stop when you see cars coming? Yeah. <laughs> if it's got lights on the roof. No, 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 no. This isn't going to work, Uncle Red. If you're going to teach me to drive, it has to be by the proper traffic rules. Harold, I've been driving for 35 years. I've never had a problem. <laughs> no, you haven't, but everyone else on the road with you sure has. <laughs> Let me put it this way to you. Do you want to be on the road driving with people who drive like you? Yeah, I thought not. <laughs> well, later on in the show, we got an adventure with Bill uh, featuring tennis. Obviously, he's just warming up here a bit. Give me the racket there. Thank you very much. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, all right. Uh, so uh, he's got the, uh, the warm-up balls there and the various uh, animal uh, traffic containers there. And they're waiting for Bill. Oh, yes, Bill. Come on, get over there. Come on, get over there. Get over there. You get over there. Where you go? Get over there. <laughs> may not be quite fit enough, you know, for this. Tennis has a long history, apparently, of people who really shouldn't be playing it. So we're, we're right in line with that. It's more of an older person's game, I guess. And, uh, Oh, you got your little bouncer there. I remember you got that. That's good. Another poor choice uh, from Bill. And he's all right. Very, oh, oh, golly. The rackets are just that much bigger these days, and I guess Bill didn't allow for that. What are you doing now? Just a couple. You need a couple. You just need a couple, Bill. You need just a couple in there, Bill. You don't know. Man. It's like that big bucket of fried chicken. Serves 20. Oh, boy. Starting to look a bit like a chicken, didn't he? Wow. Yeah, all right. Where you go? Where you go? Oh, man. <laughs> Mr. Agility. Make a wish. <laughs> oh, there we go. No. Oh, no, he can't handle it. He can't handle the heat there. Can he? What are you doing there, Bill? Oh, all right. All right. Oh, that's an apple. Bill, that's an apple. Bill, Bill, Bill. That's an apple. That's your problem. 
Oh, well, he's got a wicked slice. Oh, well, there's an upside. Oh, my uncle has a dairy farm, a man who likes to putter. He slipped and fell off the roof one day and landed in the butter. He flipped and flopped for an hour or more till he was rescued by his wife. She warned him that butter's bad for his health, but he claims it saved his life. Okay, this is for the big one. It's for a water balloon launcher and 40 air sick bags. Uncle Red! You have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dougie Franklin to say this word. Canada. Canada. And go. All right, Dougie. Yeah, sure. A country. The United States of America. Yeah. This, okay, okay. This is America's largest trading partner. The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Doug, I'm talking about the second biggest country in the world. Oh, it's got to be Texas. No, no. <laughs> Think country, okay? All right, Think all right. A country I'm directly north of America. Alaska. Oh, all right. The longest undefended border in the world is between the USA and... France, I believe. <laughs> Mom, sir. Dougie, I was born in this place. Hey. Home for unwed mothers. <laughs> about where we are right now. Where are we? Right here. Where are we? Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ontario, no, 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 no. Manitoula. No, 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 no. Uh, no. Nova something. No, no, those are provinces. Oh, what's the difference? We're out of time. Sorry. Bing dong. Way to go, Doug. Oh, that's still a country? <laughs> This week on Handyman Corner, we're gonna make a little project here. It's gonna make it real popular with the kids, and that's for sure. We're gonna build our very own air hockey game. Yeah, you got two basic principles on that. You got holes, and you got wind going through them. We've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> all right, the first thing you need for this is a couple of dryers. You can pick these up at a garage sale, or if you stay up late at night, you can hoist a couple out of a laundromat. <laughs> but by golly, now, I wouldn't advise that. Sure, the dryers are free, but the quarters to keep them running will eventually break you. <laughs> All right, now what you gotta do with these units is you gotta plug up the exhaust on them so that the air will go where you want it to go. And the, the vent is in the back here. I would suggest that you uh, plug her up with, say, a ball or even a small house plant. <laughs> Actually, these units already have a fair amount of lint built up in there. That'll do the job for us. Somebody must have dried a cat in there. <laughs> All right, now you wanna push these dryers together and then keep them together using the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. There's always one in there. <laughs> so that's where they go. Of course, now hockey is a real physical game, you know, with the slap shots and the cross checking and of course the inevitable fist fights. So make sure you really horse these babies down. <laughs> Okay, now remember that we plugged up all the exhaust vents on these. So now we gotta punch some holes in the top for us so the air will blow up. Not, not blow up, boom, blow up. <laughs> this could take a little longer than I thought. Boy, you know, that, uh, that's a little rougher than what I... I know what you do now, of course, is you add another layer on that. <laughs> okay, our new surface now is going to be a pegboard. Probably find a hunk of this hanging over your workbench. I've used it all that much anyhow. Actually, you know, I dated a girl named Pegboard. She ended up marrying a real tool. <laughs> All right, when you put the pegboard on there, make sure you got the smooth side up. This is what they call good one side. Come to think of it, so was the girl I dated. <laughs> all right, we got her all set here. I got a jar lid, that's gonna be my puck. And I got a couple of cereal bowls to hit it with. So we're all ready to go. And the beauty of using the dryer, of course, is you got the timer on here, so you got your official game time. You even get a buzzer, it goes off when the game's over. And you know you can be any team that you want. Heck, if you want to be a European team, just set her on delicate. <laughs> so remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's hockey night in Canada. Wow, my 
my first breakaway. <laughs> Stay tuned and relax. Whatever this is, we got lots more of it. I want to talk to you older folks uh, about a little secret that we all share. It's about a little something called wisdom. You know what? We may not have as much of it as the young people think we do. <laughs> now, I know we all know the fastest route up to the cottage, and we know the best kind of food, and the best kind of music, and the best TV shows. That's more a sign of our minds narrowing, not deepening. <laughs> I know when I was a little gaffer, I thought all old people were wise until they'd open their mouths and start spouting off. Then I'd realize, what a stupid old coot. <laughs> so as you get on in years, if you can learn anything, learn to fake wisdom, all right? <laughs> with silence. If you don't have a knowing brain, fake it with a knowing smile. Because when you nod and you smile, people will think, well... <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and in extreme cases, you can add a wink and a little chuckle. Because when you wink and you chuckle, you know what that says? Well, that says... <laughs> 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 so remember, I'm pulling for you because, well... <laughs> 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 well, uh, that wasn't too bad, Harold. Old Lady Bankman yelled a lot, but I think those shrubs were already dead. <laughs> Oh, that possum bag's yeah. big, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's got some power there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I meant to tell you, Harold, it, it will go faster than seven miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm just trying to maintain a safe speed limit. Yeah. Well, it's not a golf cart, Harold, you know. When you stop for a hitchhiker and they say, no thanks, I'm in a hurry, that's a clue. <laughs> As a matter of fact, anytime you can smell your own exhaust, that's nature's way of saying, pick up the pace. <laughs> okay, that's good, okay. Yeah. I can pick up the pace a little bit, I could yeah. do that. Yeah. How are the turns? Uh, interesting. And I, I, I don't think you're letting go of the steering wheel soon enough, you know? Unless you meant to make the U-turn in the tunnel there. So, <laughs> so, okay, all right, again, a yeah. good point. Okay, yeah. I'll try to remember that. All right, so I, I, I've got to pick up the pace yep. and i got to work on the turns. Yep. I got brakes down cold, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> huh? You really slapped the binders on there, huh? Yeah. The windshield's hard, isn't it? <laughs> How's your head? I'm gonna have a lump. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome to Autobiography, where uh, <laughs> members of Possum Lodge get to have remembrances of cars gone by. We've got Mike Hammer here. Mike's gonna tell us about his favorite car of all time, Mike. Ah, uh, that's easy, Mr. Green. Yeah. Corvette Stingray. Oh, boy. Oh. Hey, what a set of wheels. Yeah. Who could resist a vet? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was a beautiful car, Mike. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember the first vet I took up for a spin. It was sitting there parked in front of the convenience store there. Yeah, uh, keys in the ignition there, idling. Man. So you didn't actually own a Corvette? <laughs> well, no, but, uh, you know, for an hour it was mine. <laughs> And fast, I mean, she could run outrun any police cruiser on the road, you know. I mean, that was one great car. Yeah. Now, I knew guys who used to boost a vet, you know, and then they'd sell it for parts. I mean, to me, that is criminal. It's criminal. <laughs> Cutting up a vet. I mean, huh. You know, you know, Mr. Hammer, you might want to remind our viewers that, you know, car theft of any kind is a bad thing to do. A bad thing to do. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I love vets, but I now know that a few hours of fun is not worth the two to five in minimum security. <laughs> so uh, I would say if you want a Corvette, buy one. Yeah, but they are expensive, though, are they not? Well, yeah, they are expensive, yeah. But if you find the right bank, yeah. like on a Friday when they got a lot of cash... <laughs> Mike, now, remember how that ended? Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah, you're right, Mr. Green. I, I don't do that no more. No? Okay, good, Mike. Maybe what you need to do, you know, work hard, save your money, build up a credit rating, then you can get yourself your own Corvette, you know, one that you actually own. <laughs> oh, right. And then some loser comes along and swipes it for a joyride? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I tried to warn you earlier, Adventures with Bill this week is uh, the tennis court, and I fire one up there, and then... Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> 
All the balls come out of his pants, or maybe those were gallstones. <laughs> Couldn't care less, to be honest with you. All right, I'm gonna fire a few at Bill. Here we go. Try this, Bill. Try this. Oh, man. Just try and return the serve. Try this. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> what? 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 What's the matter? Ah, you wuss. Get back in there and take it like a man. What are you doing? Oh. Oh, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I know you're gonna jump up and down on that. You're gonna be higher. Try this. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Boy, tennis is a fun, fun, fun game, isn't it? What's going on? Oh, uh oh, uh oh. He's got an idea. Ah. Okay, I see. He's gonna take his racket, attach it. You need something to attach that with, Bill. What are you doing? Nothing in there you can use. Nothing. Bill. <laughs> don't use, Bill, don't use that. Don't Bill. 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 Dennis is a class game. Use your shoelaces. Use your shoelaces. Your shoelaces. Yeah, your shoelaces. <laughs> oh yeah. Alright. Okay, so you don't have shoelaces. Look what you gain. <laughs> Man, now there's a racket. Nice hit. Beautiful. What? Oh. 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 My God. See what happens when you try to cheat, boys and girls? I'll get the Tin Man back to the locker room. Where you go? Thanks to our buddy Jim Jackson for this carving a Herald. Harold, we got the van down off the gazebo. <laughs> we can go again if you're sure which pedal is which now. I panicked. Man. I panicked, okay? <laughs> well, it's your fault. You told me alphabetical order. Right. Brakes, gas, alphabetical order. Well, I thought you meant accelerator brakes. <laughs> well, even if it is accelerator, E comes after B. <laughs> Come on, let's go. No, 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 no. No more driving for me. Forget that. I'm just going to concentrate on the manual. Well, your test is in two hours there, young man. Yeah, yeah, I know. So help me with this one. Help me with this one, okay? Two drivers approach an unmarked intersection at the same time. Yeah. Who has the right of way? The guy in the big truck. <laughs> no, no. The guy on the right always has the right of way. Unless the other guy has the big truck. No, Uncle Red, check the manual. Harold, check the cemetery. <laughs> I see a lot of you kids are going out looking for part-time work. I think that's great. Get yourself a little extra money, buy something your parents think is stupid. Unfortunately, you're gonna come face to face with one of the sad facts of life, minimum wage. You're expected to give up all your Friday nights and weekends for a paper hat, french fry basket, and four bucks an hour. Now, if it was up to me, I'd give you five times that much just for wearing the dorky uniform. But it's not up to me. Minimum wage is just one of those things life throws at you. It's a door that we all pass through. It may be the only door you pass through. So work hard, tough it out, in no time, you'll find you're making 20, 30, maybe even 40 cents above minimum wage. You'll be on easy street. <laughs> Welcome to my favorite portion of the show. That part where we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. Way to go. Okay. Now, the next portion of the show this week, joining my uncle Red Green, of course, is his best friend in the whole wide room, Mr. Dalton Humphreys. <laughs> Our first letter goes as follows. Dear experts, I want to cook vegetarian, but meat is all my husband will eat. How can I get him to eat a balanced diet? Oh. Well, I think you got to remember here, there are, there are two major food groups. There's meat and there's salt. <laughs> so your husband's already halfway there. Well, wait, 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 wait. Haven't you forgotten, like, you know, dairy and, and uh, fruits and vegetables and grains? Well, no, we haven't forgotten them, Harold. We just figured that if you can't say anything good about something. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for a healthy, balanced uh, male diet, you want to vary your kinds of meat. Yeah. Variety of cuts, variety of grades, variety of barbecue sauce. <laughs> you know, around our home, we will have uh, as many as 17 different kinds of meat in a week. <laughs> 17 different kinds of meat? <laughs> what butcher shop are you going to, Mr. Humphrey? Oh, you don't need to go to a butcher shop, Harold, when you live near the highway. <laughs> no, no. 
So, uh, you're eating the roadkill, are you there, Dalton? We're eating all natural, organically raised, free-range, automotively processed food products. <laughs> so, uh, Dalton, like, uh, how do you cook, you know, the roadkill thing? Well, it's not hard, you know. Most of it's already grilled. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's gotta, that's got to be tough. I lost some tough meat there. Isn't well, it? yeah, yeah. Uh, some of it's already been pounded to pemmican, but you know, <laughs> at the point of impact, it's always pretty tender. Oh. Yeah, and uh, what you want to do is is presentation because there's nothing like presentation. Oh, no, that's true. To enhance the flavor. Yeah. So what we do, we'll paint a, a white line down the center of the dining room table, <laughs> and we, we'll serve our meal sometimes on a hubcap. Oh. Just picture your whole family, eh? Bowing the heads for grace. Look both ways before you cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, sometimes we'll, uh, we'll sing a couple of verses. I got my kicks on Road 66. <laughs> well, I hope you two clowns just remember, you are what you eat. <laughs> well, you know, that that's true, Harold. Tell us more about your vegetables. <laughs> Well, Harold went down for his driving test there, so I would think the examiner would be submitting her resignation any moment now. I got it! 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 What's that? It! I got it! 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 How'd it go? I got it. <laughs> I got 61% in the written test, which made up for the driving part, which started out bad in the eye exam, but I was looking into the coffee machine, so. <laughs> Can't believe you got your license, Harold. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, yeah. And you know, you're a big part of this. I have you to thank for it. Well, I, I guess having a good teacher can make all the difference. I know my third year in grade nine was a whole new world. <laughs> Oh, it's not that. The head driving examiner, yeah. he figured if I got my license, I'd be driving everywhere instead of you. <laughs> Said it was lesser of two evils, and I got it. Oh, <laughs> meeting time, meeting time. Oh, I, got, I can't oh, wait to show oh, the guys. Oh, <laughs> I got it! <laughs> well, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming uh, straight home after the meeting. Uh, I think we're going to let uh, Harold there drive me home, so you might want to duct tape some tires to the front of the house. Wait under the basement stairs so I give you the all clear. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Mr. Unsafe at any speed, and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.